Jordan. Arrington. Jordan. Auchincloss. Jeffries. Babin. Jordan. Bacon. McCarthy. Dumbass. Fox News' Brian Kilmeade accidentally let their entire audience know how he felt about Republican Don Bacon's vote for Kevin McCarthy in the first round of votes to confirm Jim Jordan. Well, maybe Brian Kilmeade didn't shout dumbass on accident because the entire crew over there voiced their frustration without the name calling. If it goes longer than three votes, some Republicans are going to start nominating other people. And we do know, the, you know, <laughs> talk, talking about the pressure <laughs> thing, Brian, <laughs> um, Republican Mario diaz Bullard says he's not going to be intimidated. He said he's going to vote for Steve Scalise. He said, if anybody is trying to get my vote, ridiculous. the last thing you want to try to do is intimate or pressure me because then I close out entirely. Uh, Lawrence, for isn't it ridiculous? Why would they vote for Scalise? He's not running anymore. Why would they vote for it, Kevin McCarthy? This is just delay, 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 and we have a war in Israel. You're so right, Ainsley. It's so petty, and it, and it, it goes against the point that they were making earlier about the other group of eight. If they go with this consensus candidate, it's going to be major backlash. There's already uh, a lot of reporting from the NRCC saying that they won't support any of these candidates if they decide to do that. There's also reporting saying that the Republican donors are saying they're going to pull out of supporting these candidates yeah. if they don't vote for Jim Jordan. And the thing is, to say I'm not going to vote for Jim Jordan because he's pressuring me, why wouldn't he pressure you? That's the way you got to do it. You got 217 right. with a four-point margin. What do you mean pressuring me? The Republican Party that touts them themselves as free thinkers is being forced to show their true principles during this embarrassing process. It's basically been going on since Kevin McCarthy needed 15 votes to be confirmed back in January. These principles that members should fall in line for the sake of the team. Maybe all Jordan needed was a powerful speech from Elise Stefanik, who could elicit the most powerful qualities he possesses. Instead, here she curiously brought up potentially the worst story about him in his Ohio State wrestling days. Jim is the voice of the American people who have felt voiceless for far too long. Whether as judiciary chair, conservative leader, or representative for his constituents in West Central Ohio, whether on the wrestling mat or in the committee room, Jim Jordan is strategic, scrappy, tough, and principled. He is a mentor, a worker, and above all, he is a fighter. In case you didn't know, Four former Ohio State University wrestlers have accused Jim Jordan of failing to protect them from a sexual predator when he was the team's assistant coach in the 80s and 90s. That's what one of them said. Do you really want a guy in that job who chose not to stand up for his guys? That's what former OSU wrestler Mike Sheck, one of the hundreds of former athletes and students who say they were sexually abused by school doctor Richard Strauss and have sued the university. Is that the kind of character trait you want for a house speaker? Well, now at this rate, the representative that Brian Kilman called a dumbass on a hot mic might eventually have the solution to get things moving. You don't do it over media, but I think in the end, a bipartisan way may be the only answer because we have eight to ten people that do not want to be part of the governing majority. And, and it, it makes us a minority. The vitriol from Fox anchors might be minimal compared to the reaction more powerful Republicans will have to ongoing instances of this dysfunction and even worse, working with Democrats. <laughs> but that didn't stop Republican Steve Womack from saying just about the same thing. And I know there are concerns from the Appropriations Committee. After all, uh, two weeks ago, Mr. Jordan voted against the continuing resolution on the very day that the, the funding was about to lapse. And so he, in essence, voted for a government shutdown. And I, and I know that concerns a lot of appropriators. I've said all along that given the divisions in the body politic right now, and let's face it, the country is divided. So the Congress is divided. But given these divisions, uh, it is going to be really difficult for either party to be able to impose its will on the other. And that so means that at some Democrats point in yet? time, uh, I work with Democrats every day. I mean, uh, I mean I to get to a them. governing majority. Uh, if it comes to that, uh, the, it'll be a conference decision. The conference will have to decide at some point in time how urgent it is for us to get this government functioning again. And with what's going on in Israel, I think we're getting closer and closer to that point. But if it becomes apparent that nobody 
and I've said this uh, publicly, mm -hmm. nobody in America can get 217 right now out of the Republican conference. If that becomes apparent to everybody, then at some point in time, we're going to have to work across the aisle, try to figure out what it's going to take for us to be able to get a speaker elected. Let's just hope recent history doesn't repeat itself, and it takes more than 15 votes for Republicans to get someone confirmed. Until then, we're looking at yet another round of the circus that Republicans call the House of Representatives in action.